Okay, so good morning all. So what we have covered till now is, I just explained you what is a programming language. So programming languages, I would say we have there are two types, high level language and low level language. What is a high level programming language? Like a English type programming language. So we human beings talk in English. We can understand English type language. But if you have to issue the instructions to a computer, computer does not understand English type language. Computer always understands binary language, which is language of zeros and ones which is also called yeah. low level language. So we as a human being, we will be issuing instructions to a computer using programming language. So there are different examples of programming languages, right? I would say we can categorize the programming language. There's another classification. These are different, different classification. So one classification is you're saying that high level language and low level language. Now other classification is two flavors of uh, programming language, just like you have different dialects, right? If you say English, English have different, different different dialects. If you go to northern part of UK, the dialect is it, it, it has a slightly Scottish accent. If you go towards it, it have a different accent. So English itself it has a different different flavors. If you talk American English uh, in Southern America, the English accent is slightly different. Northern America, the English is slightly different. Similarly, programming languages are also having different different flavors. There are two styles of programming language. One style is called functional programming language, where everything sounds like a verb. And the other flavor is called object oriented programming language. Now, functional, uh, functional type programming language example is T, it sounds like a verb where we just write functions. It had several shortcomings. Like, for example, the code was not maintainable. When, it, when you try to add more and more functionality, the code size grows in size and it is difficult to maintain and it becomes quite buggy. It is out of defect prone. So then mm -hmm. those, all those shortcomings were fixed in object-oriented programming language. Then what are object-oriented programming language? What is object? What is class? I said object is something which sounds like an entity, which sounds like a noun. If I say employee, employee is what? It's a noun. If I say person, person is what? It's a noun. If I say book, what is book? Book is a noun. So anything which sounds like a noun, we call it as an object, right? So. Now I try to differentiate between object and the class. So what is class and what is object? So class is something which is like a template, quite generic. If I say object, object is a specific example. If I say mobile, mm -hmm. so what is mobile? So mobile is a class. How will you describe mm -hmm. a mobile? Mobile will have some characteristics or some features. For example, mobile mm -hmm. will have, a, have an operating system. Mobile will have a sound system. Mobile will have a charging system, right? Uh, mobile will have, let's say, uh, you can you can a keyboard. So these are all characteristics of a mobile. But mm -hmm. if I say, can you give me an example of a mobile? So you'll say iPhone 6s. That's a specific example of a mobile. If I say Nokia 1100, that's a specific example of a mobile. If I say Motorola 6s, that is a specific example of a mobile. So mm -hmm. all these examples, they are called objects. Mm -hmm. Is this clear? Yeah. So all these mobiles will have the same attributes. All of them will have keyboard. All of them will have a charging system. All of them will have a touch screen or maybe they'll have a touch screen or they'll have a hard, uh, hard, I would say the keyboard, Nokia 11 never, never used to have that touch screen. It was having that hard board, the keyboard, right? So mm -hmm. the value of those attributes will be different. iPhone is having, let's say, a uh, Mac operating system or uh, Nokia is having some, let's say, Android operating system or you have other. So every mobile will have different, different operating system. Is this clear to you? Yeah. You understand yeah. class and object. Then we said that yeah. whenever we try to develop a program, right? We need to have some sort of a software available to us. So what do we do? We have to download set of libraries from the Oracle website, which is called Java. So whenever we download Java, we get two things. We get JDK as well as JRE. What is JDK? JDK is that set of libraries used by the developer to develop the program. And what is mm -hmm. JRE? JRE is Java Runtime Environment. Whenever you have developed the program using a high-level language, which is let's say employee.java, it's a program written in high-level language. You need to convert that into a language which computer understands. So you need to compile that. How do you compile that? Mm -hmm. You have to use Java compiler for that. So mm -hmm. when you use compile the program, it gets converted from employee.java to employee.class. Can you read employee.class? The answer is no. It's a format which only computer can understand. So mm -hmm. how do you execute that employee that class in order to execute that class? You need to have something installed on your laptop. That something is that platform is called Java runtime environment. 
Mm-hmm. So whenever you install Java, you get two things. You get JDK as well as JRE. I'll quickly demonstrate how does it look like on your laptop when you install Java. So if if it is a Windows operating system, the Java that gets installed by default is C. Uh, you can see program files, Java, and JDK. Right. So whenever you install Java on your laptop. it gets installed as uh, this is the default location that means if you don't just change anything if you keep on clicking next 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 this is how it is going to be installed so this jdk is java development kit and jre is java runtime environment this 241 is just the version depending on at what time you are downloading it this version may change but by by and large jdk is something which is used by developer if i open this and see here there is a folder called bin can you see here jdk has a folder called bin and you also see that there is a folder called jre right if i mm-hmm. said that what is jdk jdk is a set of library which is used by developer developer he will develop the program using the set of libraries provided to him for that he will mm-hmm. need those tool set those libraries should be available to him after he has developed the program he would like to test whether it is working fine or not in order to test the program he also needs jre so jdk you can see here it's a bigger sort of uh, envelope inside this you'll also see there is a folder called jre so once jdk is installed you also get can you see here inside this jdk there is a folder called jre that means developer will be able to and you can see here lib means library what is library all the functionality which are provided by java it is present inside this folder so a developer will make use of the library which is present inside this lib folder and this jre is the folder which has the software which is required to run the program that means once you install jdk by default you also get jre along with it is this clear to you or not tracy yeah yeah right so if a, if you are a developer if you just install jdk you also get jre along with it but let's say if you are just a tester if you are trying to test it then you don't have to install jdk you can just install jre So JRE is also sitting inside the bigger envelope. JDK is also JRE is also contained inside JDK, and you also get JRE. That means, let's say, if you are a tester, if you just want to test the application, do you need JDK or do you need JRE? So the answer is you just need JRE. So you can just install JRE as well. You don't need this JDK. But if you are a developer, you need JDK as well as JRE. do you need to install both the answer is no if you install jdk by default you see that it says it has a bundle jre also in it is this clear tracy yeah yeah so you can see here let me go inside this jdk i said that jdk and if i go inside this bin right so you can see here i told you uh, i executed the command java minus version in the command prompt and it showed you 1.8 something something Isn't it? On yeah. the DOS, on the DOS prompt, when I type Java, this program, you can see here what I'm typing here. If you pay attention, I type Java minus version, right? So yeah. I said that how do we compile our program? We say Java C employee dot Java. If I type like this, then what Java C is what? It's a executable command, right? So you will not be writing it directly in your um, this executing this command directly but we are going to use some sort of editor to write our program and compile our program we are never going to compile a program like this but this is just to tell you what happens when you are how does your program gets compiled i'm just trying to explain it so java c is the command that gets executed behind the scenes it takes that dot java file and gives you the compiled version which is called employee dot class is this clear to you yeah so where does this java c command is there how where does it come from when you install java it comes from this folder Just pay attention here you can see here this is java c can you see java c dot txt yeah so this command gets executed whenever you are trying to say java c dot if this command gets and whenever when you say java c employee dot java so what happens so this employee dot java gets converted into employee dot class what is this dot class this is the extension of the file we have different different extension in our we have seen that we have some text files we have some doc files right so similarly if you are writing a java program it will have extension called dot java 
when you compile that class, it gets converted to employee dot class. Mm -hmm. Is this making sense to you? Mm -hmm. So once you have compiled version of this dot class, then you want to execute it. Where do you want to execute it? In order to execute this, you need some sort of a JRE on your laptop. So the way uh, we uh, we execute this dot class file is, or the computer executes it, you, it uses the command called Java followed by the name of the compiled version. What is the compiled name of the class? It's called employee dot class. But hmm. when you are trying to execute it, we don't do, use the extension dot class. We just say specify Java followed by the name of the compiled file. Okay. Right. Now the question here is, do you need to remember all these things? The answer is no, you don't have to. You don't have to break your head. This is just the internal details to give you a high level overview. What happens behind the scenes when you're trying to compile a program, when you're trying to run a program, you will never in your life you're going to compile a program like this. You're never going to execute a program like this. But this is just to give you an overview. What happens when you compile a file? What happens when you try to execute a file? Now, how are you going to compile the file? If I'm not, why I'm telling you all this? Just to make your life more difficult? The answer is no. That's not the purpose. I just want to explain so that you understand when you're writing a program, what is happening behind the scenes and everything will be hidden from you. We are going to make use of certain tools to write this program. Is this clear to you so far, whatever I said? Yeah. Okay. Now we have been talking a lot about, we understood in the last class, what is the data type? And we haven't, we haven't talking, we're talking about method. So let's understand what exactly is a method and what we do and how do we write a method? Uh, what is the purpose of a method? So let us say, um, let us say uh, Jitendra is my accountant, right? So I have a company and I have, let's say 50 employees, right? I have 50 employees. Every month I need to run the payroll of all the employees. So I issue, I, I, I need some information from Jitendra. I'll say Jitendra is my account. I'll say calculate salary of employee. Calculate salary of employee. So this is what that means this is sounding like I'm expecting something from this. I'm, I'm trying to do something. What I'm trying to do, I'm, I need to perform certain actions repeatedly every month. What are those actions? I will say that number of days work. Multiply by daily rate. For employee one, employee two, employee three, I need to perform this and then I'll say salary one. Salary two, salary three. This is the first employee. I need to find out how many number of days he has worked and what is his daily rate. I'll calculate the salary of first employee. I'll repeat the same exercise for second employee. I repeat the same exercise for third employee. I'll calculate and in the end, I'm going to take the sum total of all the employees and I'll say, I'll come up with some sort of a number, isn't it? I'll say the total salary that I need to run is, let's say 8,000 pounds. Is it making sense to you? Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do, if I say calculate salary of employee, because these are repeated set of instructions, and we know that from our concept, whenever something is repeated, what do we do? We wrap those repeated set of instructions inside a structure, and we call the structure as a method. Isn't it? We said in the very first class, what is a method? Mm -hmm. Method is a place where we write the set of instructions which we have to perform repeatedly. So calculate salary of employee. Do you, does it sound like something which is repeated every month the answer is yes every month i need to run the payroll so this is some sort of exercise which i do every month if i do something repeatedly what i will do i'll wrap that inside the structure and i'll call it as a method so what is the name of my method so my name of method is can i keep any name can i name of method as foo can i keep my name as a bar the answer is um i can keep whatever name i wish to but what what name should i give the answer it should be meaningful name by which somebody can understand what is the purpose of that method? So if I write the name as foo, does it make any sense to you? The answer is no, you will not be able to make out what does it mean. But if I write the name of a method as calculate salary of employee, you can straight up make out, okay, this is something which is calculating salary of employee. And we have said that how do we distinguish the data from a method? So the way we distinguish, we have to use something called bracket called parenthesis. Is this clear or not? Let's see. Yes. So if I say calculate salary of employee, whenever I issue this instruction to Jitendra, what do I expect Jitendra to tell me? I expect that he, this, he should go and tell me some number, right? I'm expecting something to tell him, something to tell me back. Whenever I say the caller, who is the caller of the method? Kundan is the caller. Kundan tell his accountant. 
calculate salary of employee so what does he need to tell me i am expecting something to be returned he needs to tell me something so he needs to pass me back some some data which is which is which should be of the type what integer type salary will be of 8000 or 9000 assume that i am just not giving salary in cents i am already giving in some whole number so let's say salary of first employee is 2000 pound uh, there is 500 pound something like this so this calculate salary of employee whenever i call this method i expect this method to return me something so what is that whatever it returns me i call it as a return type is this making sense to you tracy yeah that return type will be of what type int type we all know what is the data type so i am expecting that it has to return me something which is of integer type mm -hmm. is this making sense or not yeah okay let, let us uh, write this method more clearly i'll say calculate salary of employee calculate salary of employee how do i i because it's a method i have to use parenthesis and i need to define the boundary where do i say that the method this method starts and this method ends so the way i define the boundary of method is i have to use a bracket called curly braces like this right and i need to tell what does this method do whenever i call this method this method it returns me something so what is the return type i'll say int type and this curly braces denotes me the boundary of this method whatever i write inside this method that will be executed but here i have specified that it has to return me something which is of the integer type mm -hmm. so how do i say that it is returning me integer type so i have to use some sort of a reserved keyword what is reserved keyword i'm using the word reserved for the first time for example in english programming language we have some words which have a specific meaning it cannot mean anything else if i say apple so apple always means apple you cannot do you keep do you keep your name as apple the answer is no you will never keep your son's name as apple if i said dog so dog always means dog so there are certain keywords which have a specific meaning they are reserved for a particular meaning so similarly in programming languages also we have certain words certain keywords which are reserved and they mean only a specific thing you cannot use those words for any other thing for example mm -hmm. if you want to uh, declare any 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 attribute we have been talking of attribute right we have said that name salary what are these these are attributes what what is what does name is name is an attribute now what is the type of this attribute we can call it as a string can you keep it only as name can you keep this give this name any name the answer is yes you can give any name but can you use any reserved keyword here can you say here let's say string boolean if you write like this so what does this mean you are trying to say that this is an attribute which is the type string but boolean is a reserved keyword so boolean always means a specific thing you cannot use boolean to declare the attribute similarly in programming language we have certain keywords which are reserved and they mean a specific thing you cannot use it for anything else is this concept clear to you tracy yeah so there is a keyword or reserved keyword in java we'll say a return so because the int, this this method says that this is returning of integer type so you have to key, use the keyword called return followed by something which is of integer type so let us say if your class has an attribute which is of salary int let's say if you have an attribute called sal oh sorry let's say you have an attribute called salary the so salary happens to be an attribute of integer type so int salary so in java we this is how we declare an attribute so int salary and then we have to use a semicolon semicolon means end of the statement i'll be discussing this uh, where do we put semicolon where do we put curly braces but this is how it is so if i have to declare a method how do i say that i'll say calculate salary let's say calculate salary of employees and i'll use parenthesis to denote that it is a method it's not an attribute i'll use a curly braces to denote the boundary and i need to use the concept of return type int i'll say return have to return something which is of integer type so this salary is an attribute which is of integer type so can i can use here return salary and this is the end of the statements i have to use semicolon semicolon means it's the end of the statement 
is this making sense to you yeah so return followed by something which is of interior type can i return here let's say can i return here uh, something which is anything other than integer type if i write here return kundan that means i am returning a sequence of characters so i am returning which is a is this compiler will check that what does my method declaration say my method declaration says that this method is going to return an integer type am i returning which is something of the integer type the answer is no i am returning something which is of a sequence of characters so compiler will give you an error it will say that expected integer type but you are returning something which is of string type mm -hmm. so this is the concept of return type is this clear to you yeah now if i say that is it raining outside is it raining outside so again i am trying to call a method how do i know that it's a method i have to use a this bracket called parenthesis and mm -hmm. i have to use a curly braces to denote the body of the method i can write any number of instructions but is it raining outside so logically it means that i am trying to return something which is, which can result in yes or no type so we know that mm -hmm. if we have anything called yes or no type the data type is called boolean mm -hmm. so this method return type is what it's a boolean type mm -hmm. because i have said that it's returning a boolean type i have to use a keyword called return followed by something which is of boolean type so let's say i have a variable called let's say boolean boolean let's say is weather nice is weather nice something like this i have an attribute called is weather nice which is an attribute of type boolean and semicolon so i have, let's say i have an attribute whose name is boolean is weather nice so i will say return is weather nice so what i am saying is followed by semicolon semicolon means end of the statement i am using the keyword called return followed by an attribute is weather nice and i am putting a semicolon compiler will mm -hmm. check that what is the return type of this method return type method is boolean type so am i using the keyword return the answer is yes am i returning something which is of the boolean type the answer is it will check i have written is weather nice so what does this is weather nice means it will go and check okay what is the type of this okay the type of this is yes it is boolean type that means my method signature says that i am returning boolean type and i am actually returning something which is of the boolean type is it making sense or not yes can i write here as return 1 2 3 no if i write one two three that means will compiler will check that okay what is the type of one two three it happens to be of int type but i have mm -hmm. declared as a boolean type so that means i am declaring here as a boolean type but i am returning integer so compiler will give me an error is this mm -hmm. clear or not yeah 100% clear mm -hmm. so this is the concept of a return type now let us say if you ask your son play play outside so do you expect your son to return something you you yeah. simply said no you said there go and play oh so it's he, an instruction he, yes it's, it's simply going and playing outside you don't expect anything for your son to return something right so mm -hmm. so what is the name of the action there was the method is play so again name of the is play followed by parenthesis and this is the body mm -hmm. but because this method you are not expecting your son to return something so in that case also in java we have to use again a reserved keyword that i am intending not to return anything for that also there is a reserved word and that is called void void play that means this method is not supposed to return anything i am not going to return anything simply go and execute whatever is instructions are written so i will not be using any return keyword followed by anything because the return type is void is this clear or not very Crazy. clear yeah 100 clear so void mm -hmm. means you are clearing intention that i am not expecting you to return it simply go and play if i say eat so do you expect something to be returned the answer is no simply go and eat something so you'll write the mm -hmm. name of the method as eat parenthesis curly braces like this you'll write the instructions and then the return type will be void is this clear or not yeah Hundred percent clear. Yeah. Okay. Now we will start writing the class. We have we have spoken a lot about class, right? So how do we write a class? I'll go back. 
just little bit be patient this is again the uml mm. the name of the class is student and then some attribute let's say name and roll number these are the two attributes so name is what if i if i have to declare the type so name will be of string type and roll number will be of integer type this is called attribute or characteristic or data isn't it so again mm -hmm. don't think technically attribute characteristic feature just simple english keep the programming language as close to as your daily life how do you exhibit behavior by methods so read is method sleep again i am using parenthesis to denote that it is a method mm -hmm. the structure of a class will look something like this this is just a structure and the if i if a developer a has to tell that okay i am writing i am building a software for an aeroplane so this is the this is how the class will look like they'll say okay can you please pass on the structure a will pass the structure a will say okay my class will look something like this the name of my class will be something like student it will have these attributes and it will have these methods i mean the example is wrong i am just trying to convey that he is trying the developer a is trying to tell developer b i am trying to write a software and i am to trying to develop a class like this and this is the structure of class will look like he is not going to write the whole class and then he will pass on this to developer b well, this is just a way to communicate is this mm -hmm. clear to you mhm mm is it clear or not yeah it's clear now i will translate this into a form of a code how do i translate it so how do i write it let's let's understand this so as i said that we have certain reserved keywords in java which have a specific meaning we don't use it for any other purpose so if i want to translate this in the form of a code the way i write here is i'll use the word there's a reserved keyword which i call it the class so c l a s s class it starts with small letter c and the name of my class is followed by class student and class is always sounds like a noun or an entity and even mm. in english also whenever we write a noun we always start with capital letter can you write your name with small letter the answer is no nobody is going to punish you but do you write your name with a small letter the answer is no what is the convention what is the best practice best practice always says that you have to use a capital letter mm -hmm. class student and then again you have to define the boundaries how do you define the boundaries you'll say curly braces like this so this is the start of the class this is the end of the class mm -hmm. what exactly class will have class will have attributes and some methods how many attributes are there in this case there are two attributes i'll say name but then you have to tell the what is the value of the attribute or the type of the attribute so type of the attribute is string type string so string and then you have to use semicolon semicolon means end of the statement what is the next attribute next attribute is roll number mm -hmm. what is the type of the roll number you have to tell the type so type is int type integer and then use yeah. a semicolon right and then you have to tell the method name so what is the method name here read how do you declare the method name we will say read name of the method parenthesis you have to declare the return type so do you expect anything to be returned the answer is no so you will declare the return type as void and okay. this is curly braces and curly braces mm -hmm. and you will write some instructions here is this clear so within the curly braces of these two you can have another set what is this is the curly braces means you are telling the boundary of the method what do you do okay. let's say i i give the prepare coffee so there are four steps to prepare coffee add milk add sugar whatever mm -hmm. it is so all those four steps will come here so read is what mm -hmm. it's a method mm -hmm. so whatever instructions you want to you want to write you are going to write here mm -hmm. every instruction you write after that you have to put the end of the semicolon you have to use the semicolon mm -hmm. indicating the mm -hmm. end of the statement is this clear or not yeah it's clear 100% clear yeah similarly if i say sleep so i'll say you'll say void Mm -hmm. Sleep, parenthesis like this, and you are going to write the instructions like this. Mm -hmm. Clear? So this is the whole structure of a class. Is this clear? Yeah. Now, clear. this is something written in English type language. What do we call it? This is called student dot Java. As I said, that you are never going to compile it explicitly and run it. Everything will be taken care by the editor. Now, what is editor? Why do we use editor? I'll tell you that. by and large is this point clear to you or not yeah now i'll just extend the more things here 
For example, what is a student? Student is a class. Can you give an example of a student? The answer is Tracy is an example of a student. Jitendra is also an example of a student, isn't it? It's is an object. Yeah. Tracy and Jitendra are called object. They will have two attributes. One attribute is name, and this is a roll number. It will also have a name and a roll number. Mm -hmm. So this is conceptual, and this is the actual code. Now I have not written any code to create object. I have not written anything called object. But all I have done is I have just translated this whatever was there in the, inside the URL and in the code. It looks like this. I have not spoken anything about object till now. Is this mm -hmm. clear to you or not? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent clear. Mm -hmm. How do we create object in Java? And where do we create object in Java? Whenever you have written this program. Let's say in this case, I have written two methods. I might have written hundreds of methods. When you are trying to execute that program, from where the program will start, there has to be some starting point, isn't it? So what is that starting point? How the program will start? Let's start executing from here or here or this one or this one. There has to be a starting point. So you have to tell which is the starting point from which line the program has to start. Now, what is the starting point? Let's try to understand the analogy when I say starting point. Assume that you have a television. Assume that you have a television. And when you switch on the television, if I ask you, when you switch on the television, which channel appears on the TV? Does the channel number 21 comes or 35 comes on the TV when you switch on the TV? Crazy. Um, well, in my TV, it starts with one. Okay, first of all, mm -hmm. whenever you switch on the TV, Mm -hmm. No channel will come unless until you press which channel you would like to see on the remote. You have to press the channel number on the remote, isn't it? You have to tell mm -hmm. the starting point which channel you would like to see. If you switch on the TV, it will just show you the display, right? So if you want to see which channel, it's not going to say show you channel number 21 or 35 or 56 mm -hmm. unless until you press the remote. So you have to tell which channel you would like to see. So you are actually telling the starting point. Whether you mm -hmm. want to see this, the channel number 21 or you would like to see the channel number 35. But mm -hmm. in your TV, how many channels are there? Hundreds of channels are there. Mm -hmm. Does all the hundreds of channels appear at the same time? The answer is no. Only mm -hmm. that channel will appear on your TV, which you tell, which you press from the remote. So what mm -hmm. is that remote? Remote is the starting point. Mm -hmm. If you press channel number two, only channel number two will come on the TV. Mm -hmm. Assume that your TV has hundreds of channels. So it is not going to show you the remaining 99 channels on your TV. If you press channel number two, it is always going to show only channel number two on the TV. Is this point clear to you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So assume that these methods, at this point of time, I have written two methods, read and sleep. Right? So assume that these methods are like a TV channels. So you might have written hundreds of methods in your class. So is it going to call all the methods? Is it going to execute all the methods? Answers no. There has to be a starting point in the program and you have to tell which method you would like to execute. Mm -hmm. So it's something like pressing a remote a TV, uh, the TV channel number on the remote. So which method you would like to call, you have to tell that. There might mm -hmm. be hundreds of methods in your program, but only that method will be called which you call from the starting point. Mm -hmm. Is this point clear to you or not? Yeah. So what is that starting point? So every Java program needs to have a starting point. So you have to tell that this will be my starting point and whatever method I call from this method, this only that method should be executed. The rest of the methods will not be executed. Is this point mm -hmm. clear to you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now let us see what is the starting method looks like. I'm going to get it off the screen and I'll explain it once again clearly. Again, I'm going to write my program, Let's say class. It will start with a small keyword, small case, class student. Convention is the name should be capital, curly braces, like this. I'll write the attribute, I'll say string. Again, it's case sensitive, S has to be capital, followed by a name, and then you have to use a semicolon. I'll say int roll number. And I write my method as wide read. What is void? Void is the return type. I'm intending to declare that I don't intend to return anything. And curly braces. Mm -hmm. And let's say if I'm simply printing some message on the screen. So the way I print here is just as you go with me, you have to write system dot 
out dot print ln and i am simply printing some message i am reading something like this and i am enclosing this in double quotes double quotes means you can see there this is something like a string type bracket and then i have to put a semicolon i have not explained what does this means system dot out dot print ln so system this s has to be capital o has to be small and this is the name of the method just assume that for the time being if you have to print something on the message on the screen you have to use a statement like this system dot out dot print ln so this is the only instruction that i have written inside this read method another method is let's say void study and there's only one instruction because it is a void i am not returning anything so i don't have to use the word return again i have written only simple system dot out dot print ln i am using shortcut sop but it is system dot out dot print ln i write mm -hmm. here i am studying double quotes and so i have written two methods now if my program will execute which method will call let call read method or study method so the answer is none of them i mm -hmm. need to tell which method has to be executed how do i tell it i there has to be a starting point in my program so java considers there has to be a special method that, that has to be present inside your class the name mm -hmm. of that method is called main method and how do mm -hmm. we declare that main method the way i declare is i'll say again i use the word public i have not explain what exactly public means just go with me assume that there is something called public static again i have not explained what a static means <coughs> again it starts with small public static void we all know what is void void means i am not expecting this to return me anything public static void main this is the name of the method and it takes some parameters i'll call it as a string s t r i n g i'll say a r g and i'll use some square bracket like this again curly braces like this so if my java program has a method which is like this then this is the starting point so whatever instructions i write here let us say at line number 1 i call this study method if i am calling this study method so my program will is going to call only study method it is not going to call the read method and nothing else will be executed so whatever mm -hmm. instruction it is just like a tv remote so on tv remote if you are pressing channel number 2 only channel number 2 will be executed rest of the channels are never going to be executed is this clear or not yes it's clear 100% clear 100% clear tracy yeah. yeah now how do i call this methods i have not explained so far let's say the student is a class it has two objects one is called Tracy, one is called Jitender. Tracy has two attributes: name and roll number. I have been using the word object or instance, so they are also called instance variables. Why do we use the word variable? Variable means something whose value can vary. Again, variable is mm -hmm. not a technical word; it's a English word. If I say name, name and roll number, so Jitender will also have a name. and a roll number here name is tracy and you can see here name is jitendra here roll number is 2 here roll number is 1 you can see here roll number is the variable <coughs> whose, whose value is changing here it is 1 it is 2 here value is name is tracy the name is jitendra so variable is something why it is called variable because its value is changing so we call these these are called attributes so attributes and these are called methods so all every object tracy will have a copy of the attribute <laughs> name roll number and tracy will also have a copy of these methods which is called read and is also going to have study method that means every object or every instance will have a copy of all these attributes and all these methods is this clear or not yeah so tracy is going to have name roll number and a copy of this read method a copy of this study method similarly mm -hmm. this jitendra object is also going to have a name roll number and a copy of this study method and a copy of this <coughs> read method <coughs> is it clear yeah yeah so they are called instance member what is instance instance means object instance member are of two categories one is attributes 
and one is methods so if i say the first object trace let's say let me call it as a not, instead of not calling it otherwise you'll confuse it let's say obj1 and obj2 i'm just giving the name as obj1 and obj2 so that you will not confuse with the attribute name so obj1 is what this called first instance it will have attributes name it will have attribute roll number and it will have a method a copy of method called read it also has a copy of method called uh, sleep similarly obj2 what is obj2 it's object 2 it will have a copy of attribute name roll number a copy of read method and a copy of sleep method is this making sense to you to see or not yeah is that person clear yeah i mean initially i was naming it as a tracy and then the name of the object but but it should, it, should, it, should, it should not be confused with the because name is what it's an attribute i can give any name to an object right what is what should be the name of the class can you keep the name of the class as foo the answer is yes but mm -hmm. it has to be meaningful you have to give the name of, is it a person class or a student class similarly um uh, you have to give the method name attribute name everything has to be meaningful yeah yeah is it clear mm -hmm. so i can call it that these are called instance method void and sorry they are called instance method they are called instance variable mm -hmm. is this clear or not yeah it's clear and if at all i want to call these instance method so i need to tell that which instance i am referring to whether i am referring to object 1 or object 2 because i am trying to call read method so mm -hmm. i will ask okay okay you are trying to call read method but which instance is it obj1 or obj2 because you are trying to call a instance method so you need to tell that which instance method you are trying to call which means that first of all you need to know how do we create the instance then only you will be able to refer the instance isn't it mm -hmm. if you are trying to call study method from here at this point of time if you are trying to call study method if you call a study method here so how do you call a study method study method study method is an instance method why i am calling it as an instance method because every instance will have a copy of all the instance methods is this clear or not tracy yeah obj1 will have its own copy of read own copy of sleep method obj2 also will have a own copy of read method and sleep method so whenever you try to call a study method you have to tell whose which instance sleep method you would like to call whether it is object 1 or object 2 you have to tell otherwise compiler will not know so how do you tell which object so first of all in order to tell which object first of all you need to know how to create an object isn't it first of all you need to know if i am saying i want to call study method of object 1 if you say i want to call study method of object 1 if you write like obj1 so first of all where is this obj1 how do you create obj1 you need to know if you are trying to call this method here you are trying to say obj1 dot study if you write like this what does this mean this means that you are trying to call study method of obj1 mm -hmm. but compiler will ask okay what is the type of this obj1 where is this obj1 where have you declared obj1 so first of all you need to know how do we make obj1 how do we create the object one how do we create mm -hmm. the object so now before you call this method what is this is an instance method study is what it's called instance method is this making sense to jitendra or not jitendra is it making sense to you or you are lost 100% clear yeah mm -hmm. so before you call an instance method you need to have instance in place and how do you create instance in java the way we create instance in java is the, the uh, syntax is something like this you have to say just pay attention here you have to write the class class name followed by the name of the object you can keep any name you can keep obj1 obj2 or my object or your object i'll keep it as let's say obj1 it's the name of the object is equal to you have to use a reserved keyword what is reserved keyword which is has a specific meaning so you'll use the keyword called new and followed by same name of the class and then you have to use parenthesis and then you have to use a semicolon this is how you create object of a class let's say 
if you have to create object of a student class so here you are going to write this syntax will be the we are going to write i am going to try show you what does it mean what is the name of the class here you are trying to create object of a student class so it will be the student this is the name of the object you can keep any name let me i want to keep the name as st1 so i'll say st1 is equal to i have to use a reserve keyword called new mm -hmm. followed by what is the name of the class name of the class is student so i'll say new student and then i'll use parenthesis <coughs> and then i'll use circle now my instance has been created this is the instance now using this instance i can call st1 dot study name of the instance dot study and for that i have to use a semicolon that means i am trying to call study method of which instance t1 press here i said that every object will have a copy of all the attributes and methods so let us say my attribute name is st1 here this is st1 and this is st2 so i have created a instance like this student st1 is equal to a new student and then if i say st1 dot study yeah is this is this clear or not yeah so is it going to call the read method no because i have just call only start is this clear or not yeah it's clear now i'm going to write this whole program using an editor and why i'm using this editor because editor comes with a lot of functionalities the name of my editor is called intellij i'll quickly demonstrate it and i'm going to write it right so let me close this program and i will the way this is called intellij idea right? so i'll simply close this and i'll absolutely start from scratch let you understand it well you have to install this software on your laptop and the name of the software is called intellij there are two versions of the software one is called community edition and one is paid edition so you have to download the community edition which is open source and free you don't have to pay you don't have to buy any license so once you install this intellij it will it will have a shortcut like this you have to create click on this intellij and let's see what and we'll try to write the same program using the code right so let us see how it opens it might take a while so you can see here the name is community edition 219.3 and that branch is the company which has developed this that branch is the company which has developed this editor why are we using editor can you write your uh, all the documents using notepad the answer is yes you can use notepad as well but do you use notepad to write the email or something like that the answer is no you use ms word why do you use ms word because ms word comes with a lot of other options it will give you spell checker right it will give you the, the formatting option so many other options come with the ms word so yeah. can you can you use java program using notepad the answer is yes but we we don't use notepad because we are using a special editor because mm -hmm. the editor will give you some other many functionality which will not come in the notepad when mm -hmm. i open it for the first time it is trying to load some project which is i which i already developed it i'll simply cancel it and i'll see i'll try to i'll cancel it and i'll try to open it it'll uh, start absolutely from the scratch oh. so it, it it'll open something like this for the first time i'll say create new project so if create new, i'll click click on create new project so it is going to open a new project for me it will come something like this and you can see here it gives me so many options java java fx i have used the word gradle groovy kotlin these are all programming languages right so they are all jvm based language i have explained in one of the video what exactly is jvm jvm is something like part of jre java runtime environment depending on the operating system that you are using you have to install a specific version of jvm or jre now you can see here it says something called uh, when i have installed java it is showing me this version you don't have to choose groovy or kotlin because by default you can see here it the java is highlighted so we are going to create a java project i'm going to simply go and click on this next option if i click on this next option it gives me an option called create project from template i don't want to use any template i want to create absolutely from the scratch so i'm not going to check this option so i'm going to simply click on next and it gives me the option to specify the project name so at this point of time it gives me an end title and the name of the location is c source and so there is a path which exists 
this is the location where my project will be created. I want to choose my name. I'll give my name as let's say demo or I'll say hello world. I can give any name to my project. I'll say hello, hello world. So you can see here, it has automatically created a path, a project at this location. So it has, if, if this location is not there, you might have to create it. But the, my project is getting, I, I, I already have a folder in my C drive whose name is source. It is going to create a project at this location, C colon source, hello world. If I go and click finish, I'll show you that, I'll quickly show you that this location, this project will be created. If I click on finish, it says that the project already exists. Just a second. Yeah, so you can see here, it says file already exists. So that means this project in your case is not going to exist. So you have to say, uh, you, you'll not get this prompt because this already exists. So therefore I'm getting this error. I'm mean, not error, this is a warning. I would like to override it. If I click on yes, it's going to override it. It says this model already you want to override. I'll say click yes. In your case, because this project does not exist, you'll not get this warning. If I click on next, you'll see that it will start opening and your project will open something like this. Yep, it, it opens something like this and you have to go here and choose, click on this project at this and it will open something like this. It is going to create a structure like this. Don't think too much. Expand this. If you click on this, it is going to expand. You'll see it has created a structure for you like this. Right? You can see here SRC folder and hello world.iml. Don't worry about all these things. It has created this structure. Now, what do I need to do? I need to go and click on this SRC folder. If I expand this, you can see here, if I expand it, it has, it has already created the name as, oh, sorry. Uh, I think it has already created a structure like this. Let me, because uh, this project was already there. I don't want to show it. So let me, uh, let me create a new project. I'll give it a new name so that uh, you don't get confused. Let me call it as a, name uh, let's say if i give the name of the project as file new project and i give the name of project as let's say employee again i'll go and click on next and i'm going to choose employee and i click on finish it's going to create it'll say that do you want to replace the create or replace the project in the existing window if i click on this window it's going to create a new project. It will replace the background with the current project. If I choose a new window, it is going to open a project in the new window. I'll choose a new window and it's again going to create an open. And if you see here at the bottom, one window says hello world, one window shows employee. I can go with them. It can open. I'll choose this employee. So now the project of my employee is something like this. Employee SRC. SRC is now empty. Why it was showing SRC with already some pre-populated files because I already had created the project. Now SRC is absolutely empty. Now, if I go and click create and click new, right click, and if I click on new, if I click on Java class, if I click on Java class here, I'll say employee. I can give any name to it, O bar, whatever it is. There are various options, class, interface, name, and we don't know what other things are at this point of time. I'm going to choose class. If I click on class, it's going to create a structure like this, right? So you can see here, it has already created a class for me and you can see something called public. So what exactly public means? I have explained the video as well. Uh, for the time being, let's not even confuse. So public, private, protected, default. Something like the four words, what exactly it has something to do with the security. In layman's term, if you try to understand, let us say uh, Jitendra works in a hotel. Right? So hotel reception. Can anyone walk down to hotel reception? The answer is yes. It is publicly accessible. Can anyone can come at the reception? So that is accessible to anyone. That is called public. But if I say, let's say Jitendra works as a chef. So he works in a kitchen. So can anyone enter inside the kitchen? The answer is no. Only there are certain people who can enter inside the kitchen. It is restricted. Now, that means some with some restrictions, somebody can enter inside. There is some section of the hotel which is accessible only to certain authorized people. But if I say 
Chitendra works in a Redison hotel and his boss has a OC of the Redison hotel. He has a private cabin. So can anyone enter inside this cabin? Other than boss, the answer is no. Only boss can enter it. So that is highly restricted area. So we call that area as private. So we understand what is public, what is private. And we, we said protected means it is having certain restrictions. If somebody can enter inside the kitchen, somebody who is authorized, not everyone. Similarly, we have concept of default. So this is in the layman's term, public, private, protected default means it has something to do with the restriction. Where exactly, which is the, some area of your, uh, I would say, something which is accessible to the whole world, something which is accessible to certain people with some restrictions and something which is highly restricted. So in software world, whenever a piece of code that we are writing, for class when it is visible to the whole world or it is visible to the certain people or if some methods, it is having some restrictions. So these are something, we call them as access specifiers. Again, please do not break your head if it is not making sense. Just understand from the layman's point of view, it is something related to the visibility, who, who, where exactly the class is visible, who all can see that class, who all can execute that method. Right? We will be discussing this in quite detail, but we are trying to write a simple program at this point of time. So in order to avoid any confusion, I'm going to uh, simply get rid of this public keyword. Just pay attention here. Whenever I have written here one program, so I have written an employee class and I'm going to declare the attributes. How do I declare an attribute? Employee will have, let's say, emp ID, employee ID. So let's say employee ID. Put semicolon. What is the type of this? I need to declare the type. I'll say employee ID will be of the integer type. Then I have to say, tell the name. What is name? Name is, it have, I have to declare the type. I'll say name. I have to use the word string. String followed by name. Now, employee what? Employee will have some, how does, these are the characteristics of employee. Employee will exhibit some behavior using some methods. So we have to write some methods. So let's say employee will work. I don't expect anything to return. So I'll declare the return. Let's say if I write here as work, I have to use a parenthesis and curly braces. And I have to use the word return type. So I'll use the word called void. Void means I'm not intending to return anything. Now I want to print some message. How do I write some message? I'll say system dot out dot print ln. So the shortcut in IntelliJ, if I just type S S S O U T, it is going to give me the shortcut. I'll choose it. It'll automatically print this message for me. If I say here I am working. Right? And let's say another method is gossip. Employee, they do gossip at workplace. So I'll say gossip as the name indicates, it indicates some sort of action. You have to use this parenthesis to indicate the body of the method. I'll use a curly braces. And then because it's a method, we have to declare the return type. I'll say void. I'm not intending to return anything. I use the word void. Again, I'll say S out. S out is a shortcut, but you have to write, if you, if you don't know shortcut, you have to type the whole program. I'll say, I am gossiping. And as I said that, every program in Java, if you, if I, if you try to execute it, it will find out where is the starting point. Do I have a starting point here? The answer is no. We need to have a starting point. So the way we declare starting point is, you need to have a main method. And again, there's a shortcut if you type PSVM, It'll give you the option. It'll write the code for you. Now, if I try to execute this program, right? So it'll say that, okay, do I have a starting point? The answer is yes, I have a starting point. So whatever is like a TV remote. So when you try to execute this program, what will be the output? Is it going to call this method or this method? The answer is none of them because you have not written anything inside this method. It's empty. You have not pressed, you have not, you have not called any method. How do you call that method? These are called instance variable and these are called instance methods. These are instance variable and these are called instance method. So you need to first of all create instance of the class. How do you create instance of the class? We have said that class name. So name of the class is employee. I can give any name to it. I'll say emp1 is equal to, I have to use the new keyword, is equal to new and followed by name of the class. If I type first letter, it automatically starts populating for me. And I have to use a parenthesis and semicolon. Tracy, is it clear to you or not? 
You're on mute, Tracy. Is it making sense? Okay. Uh, somehow, for some reason, I can't hear you. So now I want to call the method. So how do I call it? I have to use the EMP1 dot. You can see here. Can you pay attention here? I said that every object will have a copy of all the instance variable and methods. If I type here EMP1, if I yeah. type here EMP, EMP, yeah, I know I can hear you. You can see here, you can see the attributes EMP ID, name, gossip, and work. Yeah. I said that every object will have a copy of the attributes and all the methods. Can you see here? EMP ID, name, gossip, work, all are visible. That means EMP1 is the object that I have created. It has copy of all the attributes and copy of all the methods. I want to call mm -hmm. the work method. So I call, click on this. And now it is going to call that method. Right? So if I execute this program, you can see here. This is, this is, can you see the green icon here? The green icon here. This, if I choose this option and make sure your attention, the main method has its case sensitive. You cannot write capital M. If I'm writing S, S is case sensitive. You cannot write, no, most of the students will write small s. You will do a lot of these mistakes. If I want to execute this program, so if you do a right click here, you will see various options. So run employee.main, run debug.main. So if I choose the first option, it is going to execute my program. So which method will be called? Is it going to call the gossip method? Tracy? No, work. Work method. I might have hundreds of methods. Is it going to call all the methods? The answer is it's going to call only that method, which I'm going to call from mm -hmm. the main method. So if I execute mm -hmm. this program, it'll go and it'll execute run employee.main and it'll show me the output on the screen. So it is taking a while and in the end you'll see that, can you see here it says I am working? Yes. So this is the first program that we have written. So mm. in essence, what we studied today, what is a programming language? What is the need of a programming language? What are the two flavors of programming language? High level language, low level language. Low level language is what computer understands, which is called binary language, language of zeros and ones. What is a high level language? A language, English type language, which humans can understand. So examples of programming language, which are high level language, the answer is C++, Java, C, Python. These are all high level languages. We need to convert that high level language into low level language. How do we convert that? By making use of compiler. Are we compiling here? That we are not compiling here. I said that we are not going to use Java, C, employee.java. Everything is taken care by the editor. Are we writing Java space employee? No. All I did was I did a right click and I executed that program. But I just wanted to show you that what happens behind the scenes. Then I explained that there were some problems in the functional programming language. What is the example of functional programming language? Something which sounds like a verb. Everything mm -hmm. you'll have only methods, you'll not have any attributes in a functional programming language. Example of functional programming language is a C. What is the object oriented programming language? which we can physically see it, something which is sounding like an entity. Then mm -hmm. I introduced the concept of class and object. What is the class? Class is something which is like a template. Mm -hmm. Right? I say employee is a class. Jitendra is an example of employee. Kuntan is an example of employee. Tracy is an example of employee. So class will define that what all attributes all these objects are going to have. It's something mm -hmm. like a template. So say student, student is a template. Student will have certain characteristics name, department, right? ID, gender, height, weight, every student will get the same attributes, but the value of those attributes will be different. Then we saw that, what is the meaning of access specifier? What is class means? What is method means? I also explained the concept of the return type. I also explained what is data type. So why do we have data types in Java? We try to logically group the data. We said we have, we have eight different data types, byte, short, int, long, float, double, char, boolean. And we said that string is, we consider string is also kind of data type, but we are going to discuss in detail in future. Then we mm -hmm. started writing the code. I explained that in order for a program to execute, every Java program has to have a starting point. What is the starting point? We need to have a main method. I have not explained so far 
in detail what exactly public means. I just gave you an overview. I have not explained what exactly static means. I have not explained what is this argument at this point of time. Consider that it is like this, right? And go with this. This concept will be explained in future in detail. Okay. Is this clear? Yeah. For example, if you are trying to, I give the same analogy to all my students. If you are trying to learn a car driving, you are going for a car driving lesson. You don't say that. Can you please open this bonnet for me, engine for me? I would like to see the internal details. Then only I would be able to drive a car. In order to learn the car driving, just assume that engine is there. It is working fine. How does it work internally? You don't have to know it. Mm -hmm. In order for learning car driving, just go with that car. You just have to know what is clutch, brake, and accelerator. Just go with it. But do you need to know about the engine? Answer is yes. You will get to know about the engine at some point of time once you are once you learn driving. Once you're absolutely confident how to drive a car, then if your car breaks down, you should know. You should have some idea about the how what is there inside the engine. Is the engine mm -hmm. engine gets really hot, so you should know where the coolant is. Mm -hmm. But you don't try to learn everything internal details of the car in the very first class, isn't it? Yeah. So similarly, you don't have to understand what does this square bracket means. What does this static means? What does this public mean? Just go with me. Whatever I explain, try to, uh, you have to watch this video many times and then get your hands dirty. And please do not think about these technical jargons. It is very, very easy. We mm -hmm. will be repeating the same concepts, same words, same terminologies thousand times during the training. So there is absolutely no reason why you will not get it. Okay. Is this clear or not? Yeah. So just one small thing before I conclude, so that uh, which I have not covered. Whenever you try to create an object, what happens? So in Java, we have basically two types of memory. I mean, normally in your laptop, we have something called RAM and a hard disk, right? Mm -hmm. So what is RAM? RAM is a memory, right? So that memory is divided. Whenever you're trying to execute Java program, it needs some memory. That memory, you some uh, some portion of that RAM is allocated to your Java program. Mm -hmm. So that memory is basically divided into two types. One type of memory is called stack and one is called heap. So whatever RAM is there, your system might be having four gigs RAM or eight gigs RAM. So that a certain portion of that RAM is allocated to your Java program. Any program that runs on your laptop, it needs some memory, whether it's MS Word or a notepad or a calculator. So if your Java program is running, that also needs some memory. So certain memory is allocated to your Java program that gets divided into two parts. One is called stack, one is called heap. So whenever you create an object on this, in, in the, like this, so whenever you say object, what happens? It creates something on a heap. Objects are always created on a memory, which is called a heap. So an object will be created here. Whenever you say employee EMP1, so what is this EMP1? EMP1 is actually the reference variable is pointing to the object that, that gets created on the heap. So what is this object is going to have? Object will have all the copy of attributes and all the copy of methods. It will have emp ID. It have a name. It will also have a copy of this method work and gossip. Mm -hmm. Is this clear? So what is this EMP1? EMP1 is the reference variable using which, which is pointing to the object that gets created on the heap. Is this clear or it's not clear? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it's clear. So if you create another object like this, if you say employee EMP two is equal to new employee. If you write like this, gonna go into your heap. so whenever you use the new keyword, it going to, it's going to create another object on heap and it'll have mm -hmm. copy of all the attributes and this EMP2 is the reference variable mm -hmm. using which you can reach out to this object. Is this clear? Yeah. So this, this bit, um, I just want to explain. And I have explained this concept again and again in my videos. So it will be absolutely crystal clear. Okay. Okay. So that's all I wanted to cover for today. So uh, feel free to ask any question if something is not clear. Okay. But I think I tried covering all basics from the start till the end. Hopefully this will be this will help.